With that said, the man, the myth, the legend, we all know and love him. He is a man to, uh, uh, that got into business. He's what I would call it in the old days, we call them trailblazers. People that just set the world on fire, just there's a saying, set yourself on fire and the rest of the world come out and watch it burn. He's one of those. He just going out and just setting the trail on fire for people to follow or lead or get the blankety blank out of the way. One of the best of all uh, conventions, uh, uh, celebrations I ever seen for senior vice president, Mr. Marvin Sapp brought the house down. I was watching the Grammys the other day, old one, and Mr. Sapp was on there. And I'm like, my God, I can't believe he was actually at our convention. And right to the other side of him was Mr. Um, Les Brown, his spiritual other father. I'm saying, how do you top that? Now, I tell you what, since then and before then, he's led a lot of people help them mentally get their mind together, spiritually get their self together, mentally, spiritually, and also physically with eating right and trying to impress and improve on the people a lifestyle they should live. Without further ado, my dear friend, Senior Vice President, the great, the one and only, Mr. Byron Nelson. What is going on, family? How are you? Please forgive my tardiness. You, you ever like uh, get up at five o'clock and then like you like work really hard and then you like, I'm gonna take like a, a 10 minute nap and that 10 minute turns into 30. I'm like, I'm like oh, oh, what's going on? What's happening? I was like, God, I, I had several, I got a whole squadron give me wake up calls. I mean, literally my phone is and I mean, I talk to them every day, so they know we're on like, like clockwork. So I want to extend the deepest apology is one of those human things. It lets me know that I'm still human, you know. So please forgive me. Bree knows. It's like, whoa, Jesus. So, you know, I heard Jesus talking to you like, hey, wake up, boy. It's like, you, you ain't going to make no money sleep. Get your butt up. <laughs> Mr. Al Tom, I sent you the archangel. What else you need? The bald man. I gave him your haircut. I gave him a better, he's a better looking version of you. But so anyway, all that is <laughs> I am honored to be here. I don't I don't need to tell you how great this man is and why I'm on this call. I want to jump right into the into the music uh in which I had prepared for you guys and I want to share. Um I'm going through a season of transformation, a massive transformation, massive. Uh, and why I share that with you is because when you want something to shift in your life, it has to be intentional. It has to be intentional. And I need you to also understand when you decide to shift, notice I didn't say change. Only God changes things. Only, the only thing you have control over is transformation. That's all you can do is transform. All you can do is sculpt. All you can do is chisel. All you can do is, is gnaw at. All you can do is mold. All you can do is move it a different direction, put it back in, squeeze it a little bit, take this off, add a little bit here. You can't change. And so many people I hear, I need to change. Change what? <laughs> Your underwear, what you need to change? I'm trying to understand. What you trying to change here? You can't change nothing about you. You can change your kitchen around, you can change your house, your address, you can change your income, but none of that changes without you transforming. You have to, there are shifts that have, your mentality has to completely shift. If you, if you know anything about construction or real estate, certain things have to move. <laughs> You're going to have... I've seen people build and construct and it'd be off by an inch and they had to tear the whole thing down because it crossed a, 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 a line, <laughs> a property line that was an inch, an inch. I know a guy that actually constructed an entire, built his pool and everything. They had to go and re-cement, redo, redo everything. Now the person where they planted some, some trees and the trees went over the line and the, the two didn't, it was like the, the Hatfields and McCoys. They just did not get along. So they stuck to that line and they were in court for costing people a lot because they were trying to change. You, you can't change something. You can only shift something, move something. You have to move your mind around. See, when it says God provided you everything that you need, 
There was no lie in that. He gave you everything that you needed. So why are you trying to change what he gave you? It amazes me when people are like, I'm going to chisel my nose. I'm going to give me some extra breasts. I'm going to get my butt tucked. I'm going to, he gave you everything. Now, I'm sorry, ladies and guys, and anybody who's been through this. I live in Colombia at the number one place that they try and change stuff. And I'm the first to tell you, I am one of the most vain people you know that is trying to uplift myself. I've used every lotion potion in, on the planet Earth to make sure that I have the bottle of you. But before I start tucking and, and moving and, 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 and massaging and, 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 and doing this and doing that, I shift me first. I'm in the gym. I'm not trying to, I'm not getting no abs put in my stomach. I'm not getting no calf muscle put in my calf. I, I live in the gym. <laughs> I improve upon what I have before I look for anything cosmetic to alter it. Is anybody getting this conversation? Please don't take it personally. I mean, well, maybe you should. But check this out. You know, I was listening to one of my mentors. I'm, I said, I'm going to take, I'm going to go back a step into the realm of Mr. Nelson. Mr. Realm, the old Mr. Nelson didn't care who he offended because he just, it was just about the truth. And if the truth offends you, then you live in a lie. <laughs> you know you've been lying to yourself you know I, I have conversations with people about this in the business you're like i so want to do this you stop stop lying stop lying i've been on every call yeah so have i i've watched every episode of dallas too don't mean that i'm gonna move to dallas <laughs> I watched every episode of Dallas and I'm still wishing for oil to show up in my backyard too. <laughs> Cause you have been at every call and every training. Yeah, that means that now you, you an actor, you, you, you in the movie, <laughs> please write this down. I must participate in my own rescue. I must participate in my own rescue. I, I feel like, yeah, I know. Are you waking up? Yes, I am. Okay, let's get it going. All right, so what we're talking about here <laughs> is three things. I'm listening, Mr. Nelson. Are you sure you listen? Yes, I am. You act like you listen, but you don't apply nothing. You just keep showing up every Friday like you're going to do something. I know I'm really going to do something this time. Please tell me what you need me to hear. Okay, I'm sure. You need to grow. You, uh, are you serious? Okay, okay, all right. Don't have me yell at you no more, please. I'm gonna yell at you because I love you. I'm gonna humble myself and actually apply what you told me. You said that last week, but guess what? I, as a teacher, know not to ever give up on you till you give up on yourself. So, so long as you show up, I'm gonna keep coming at you. And when the daggers start hurting that I throw, it's because you actually are doing something with it. And I can't hurt you any more than you hurt yourself because you're gonna be more pissed off at yourself than anybody else can be. Makes sense to me, Mr. Nelson. Okay. Oh, y'all there. How y'all doing? We just having a conversation. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. So what we're talking about here is three things. Yes, sir. Number one, selling out. Okay. Could you explain that? You have to sell out, Byron. And let me tell you a secret about selling out. Because you heard Mr. Thomas, Mr. Thomas talking when he, you first came on the call. Who's going to do it but you? You have to sell out every single day it's amazing how people actually Byron, sell out when they sign their application sell out when they want to go etl sell out when they want to get a check sell out but they they haven't learned the secret sauce what's the secret sauce sir I, i'm just asking the secret sauce is you got to sell out every freaking day you got to wake up because it's not easy if it's easy that's the easy part of saying you in the hard part is selling out to do what you got to do every day that's the hard part is selling out because you're going to talk to some knucklehead that's going to try and suck the life out of you. You're going to talk to somebody else who's going to quit on your team. You're going to talk to somebody else that's not going to support you. Life is going to happen. 
Somebody you're going to either get pregnant or is going to be impregnated. Somebody you know is going to catch COVID. Somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to give birth to a child. A bill's going to come in that you can't pay. You're going to get in an argument with somebody you don't like. And you're going to come back to me with all this BS and excuses about what happened as to why I haven't seen you in two days. Not understanding that I, Mr. Thomas, I, Jocelyn, I, Renat, I as a leader, I said, I got your back. Did I not tell you when we go into this thing that we're married? Tammy, did I say that we're married? We are married. Emily, did I say that we're married? I, I mean, I mean, Stephanie, are we not married? I, when I'm with somebody, I'm married. Did, are we married? We're married. That means that you can't leave me for three days and say some crap happened in your life and I'm just going to get back to you in about three days because I'm sorry I didn't call. It means you didn't come home for three days and you asking for a divorce. It means when we're so, if something's happening in your life, I don't mind if you tell me something's happening in your life. I mean, I really don't mind if Janika, if Janika says, well, you know, so, so my, my family, I'm going to give you space. In fact, I'll probably buy you the damn ticket. But if you just leave the house for three days and there's no conversation and you still want me to support you, then you are committed to drowning. I said, sell out every day. Don't lie to me. I didn't get into this marriage for liars. I got in to stand for you when you couldn't stand for yourself the way Jesus stands for me when I can't stand for myself. That's why I read footprints every day. Stop lying to me. Stop lying to your children. Stop lying to the people you're talking to in this business that, oh, we can do get wealthy. We can do, we can get great. We can do things. And you sit up believing not even a mediocre life, a subpar life in your own integrity. It ain't got jack to do with the business, Byron. Stop it. Just stop, stop it. Stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have some water. People that succeed don't have, and they don't, they can't, they, they make sure, Byron, that they don't have the luxury of interpretation, of opinions, of excuses, of, well, do you know that I have a PhD? Uh, well, do you know that I actually have an MD? Do you know that I run this company? Do you know that I have three jobs? Do you know that I'm a single parent? Do you know all that I'm doing? This isn't what I cracked up. I, I didn't expect it to be like this. Well, have you ever given birth to a child? Because you didn't expect to go through nine months and then have stretch marks either, did you? Do you want to give birth to your dream or do you want to actually abort after a month? Do you want to abort after three months? Are you going to feed the dream properly? Are you going to nurse made it? Are you going to stop with the alcohol? Are you going to stop with the food, all the fatty? Are you going to actually give birth to this dream, raise it properly, and know that it's still not walking after six, seven months? That's nine months in and then six months after. What the hell are we talking about here? And you only gave three months and all of a sudden it's hard for you, but you say you got this big dream and that you, you want to do all these things because you have these expectations. Let me tell you something. The minute you can see the future, holler at your boy. Since you want to tell me what you were expecting. I know if we put in the labor, if we go through the trimester, if we lay the foundation, if we do a preparation, if we create a plan, if we put accountability into it, if we hold each other accountable, if we put in the sweat equity, if we work on our skills, if we work harder on our skills than we do chasing a check. I know if my why truly makes me cry, if my why is really real, it's gonna wake me up in the middle of my sleep. It's gonna put me to bed late at night. I'm gonna be exhausted figuring out the hypothesis and the solution and the equation for success. Because I'm gonna try everything. I'm gonna fail viciously, intentionally fail viciously. For there's no way I can come up with the solution for the flu, for the flu or for COVID or for chickenpox or for AIDS without coming up and trying everything I can until I come up with the solution. I, I need to try every, I get excited about the failure. I need you Byron to get excited about the failure because that's where the money lives. You know why I have been successful Byron? No sir, why have you? Because I get excited about the failures. I failed so much, I actually figured out what works. I didn't say, oh, I talked to three people. I talked to five people. I'm counting people. When you can count the people you talk to, 
And let me tell you what that means, Mr. Nelson. How many people you talk to today? Um, hold on one second. Let me get my journal. I got my journal here somewhere. Let me see. I got it here. You've been you've been you've been tracking the people you talk to? Yes, Miss. Yes, Miss Nelson. I got my journal right here. On um, listen, on Monday I talked to I talked to ten people. On Tuesday I talked to three people. On Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, I talked to six people. Really? You talked to half people? Because see, I have my journal, but my journal is like Mr. Al Thomas, it's just papers. It's names and papers and trackings and dates. So am I doing good? No. Let me tell you about why you aren't doing good, sir. You aren't doing good, sir, because if you can count the people you talk to, you didn't talk to nobody. Because if your child needed a heart transplant, if your child needed a kidney, if, you need, if your mama needed a blood transfusion, if somebody was lying on the bed and it was up to you for them to live, and you had to find the money because the insurance wasn't gonna cover it. Would you show me your book and tell me how many people you talked to on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? Or would you just talk to everybody until you found the person who could solve the damn problem? That's when I know in part one of this conversation and this meal that I'm giving you, you sold out when you can't count no more. When you can tell me who you talk to and it's Friday on Wednesday and you can remember who you talk to, you didn't talk to nobody. So the only person I remember on Wednesday is the person that signed up. The only person I remember on Monday is the person who signed up and got qualified. The only person I remember on Tuesday is the person who signed up and didn't get qualified, pissing me off. The only person I remember on Wednesday is the person who brought me 10 people. I, I don't know, I, I, I'm sold out. And I got to sell out every freaking morning. Not for no, I'm not here to impress nobody. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not trying to figure out who I could talk to on social media. I'm not trying to figure out who's outside. This week, we're actually on selling out and dripping. Stephanie went out who's one of my star students, y'all heard from last week. She said, I gotta go prospect some people. I gotta, I gotta go home. She was having lunch or dinner or something. She was, I gotta go prospect some, I gotta get some people. Before she could leave, the guy who was serving her was so amazing. She realized once I decide and I sell out, I ain't gotta go home to get my prospects. They all around me, God's bringing them to me. I ain't gotta look for nobody. I don't gotta go look and make the, uh, the list is for you so that the person that sold out has an insurance policy. You know, let me tell you what the list is. This is, can I be real? Ms. Thomas, can I just be trying? Shut up, I can I, okay. I told you, you just take notes. The list is the insurance policy against the person we think is gonna quit. And if you haven't made a list of 100 plus names with a power list of 25, you the one gonna quit. We just trying to get a, a strand. We, we, we sit up here woven. I got Mrs. Driscoll over here with a, with a needle. I got Mr. Thomas over here with a needle. I got Julian over here with a needle. And we sitting up here. I got Sam. I said, could you go get the machine? I said, Bree, could you go up there and get the material? And I said, can we just start knitting? And, and Tosh, could you just go and get another second loan for this business? And we just trying to put some, we trying to put on and knit a sweater. 
because we know winter's coming and we need to knit a lot of sweaters to take care of people who can't take care of themselves. And this person comes and says, I want to help. And they bring one little strand and string and about seven, 10 names. And it's like, I made my list. Give me that. Get out of here. Everybody gonna be freeze to death with your ass hanging out with us. Get out of here. I gotta have Janika go pray for you. She go pray. She get out of here. Her and Tammy gonna be in some some in some island praying for y'all. I promise. Crackheads. You got to sell out, Byron. Not on ACN. Everybody needs ACN, just like everybody needs, you know, vitamin C. Everybody needs, uh, you know, oxygenated water. Everybody needs sleep. This is it's not about, you know, if ACN, ACN is not something that you should be tiptoeing around with. with so uh, do you No, know it's, it's part of my DNA. Now, because I know my son, when he was young, he didn't like pills, but he needs vitamins because I have this new puppy. And I know he doesn't like hard stuff, you know, unless it's cold because he's teething. So I, I have to, judge, you know, but it's something, that, but the dog has to take the deworming. He has to take uh, these other, you know, vaccinations and things. He has to take this stuff to clean out his system, clean his teeth. My son has to take the vitamins. Uh, so sometimes I may have to go get uh, the gummy vitamin. Sometimes I have to get uh, the vitamin and, and, and make it small and crunch it and put it inside the food. So what I've learned to do is because I know some people don't really get it until they see the results of it, right? Until you see one ab show up, do you actually go hard in the pain? You're like, oh, you see I lost some weight? No, I'm crazy ass. You've only been in the gym like two weeks. Well, I feel different. I bet you do. You should be in pain. You've been carrying all that weight. But the point of the story is sometimes I have to dress it up. So what I did, and I learned a long time ago, is I created this pill called Matrix. And so when they ask, it's like, what do you do? I do Matrix. I don't say ACN. I don't say network marketing. They're like, oh, what's that? And I was like, try one. And then they try and they're like, oh, my God, I feel electrocuted. I've never been in a family like this. I've never talked to nobody like this. Ain't nobody talked to me like that. My mama didn't even talk to me like that. Oh, Jesus, I can make some money, too. You going to pay me to become great? Oh, Jesus. It's ACN. Yeah, have another pill. Have another have another one. Have another one. Have another one. <laughs> Do one more rep. <laughs> Let's go an extra five minutes this time. Let's have fun. Let's make a decision to have fun, sell out, and go crazy. Let's go to 1999 and just become Prince. Let's just go crazy. How about that? Let's just dance and have fun. And whoever doesn't hear the music ain't supposed to be at the party. <laughs> In fact, we asking who invited you. First thing you got to do when you wake up in the morning is sell out on yourself, sell out on God and sell out on the dream he, he planted and impregnated you with. The first thing to make the devil run because he is around and running rampant with no underwear, trying to mess up everybody's life, including mine, is you got to wake up, sell out on God, sell out on yourself and sell out on the dream that he impregnated you with. I had a friend, uh, we won't even get into any misery, but what's crazy is it's just every day something's happening. 
I'm sure everybody can attest in one way or another every day. So I went out with my boys last night. And because so much death and everything is around us and this and that and all this other stuff, people around me are concerned, like, please be careful. I'm just concerned to just be careful. Not a problem. I mean, to the point where I'm being challenged, I'm like, I don't even go out. <laughs> and this is the most I have not traveled since I've been alive. <laughs> if I didn't commit to supporting and serving, anybody knows me knows, I'd be on an island. I would take my mom and leave. And my chinchilla, two dogs, and a cat, and goldfish. But the point of the matter is, <laughs> by the way, I'm allergic to cats, so I don't like cats. But the whole thing is, I got home last night at 2.30, and I literally went out to escape. The only reason it was 2.30, not because I stayed out all night. Where we went was an hour and a half drive one way just because there was this concert, and it got stuck in traffic. Anybody been in L.A.? No, that's, that's just... It's just, you would think it's abnormal, but it's just weird. It's like by the Hollywood Bowl. I'm like, what the hell? Why did I take this route? But anyway, finally got home. And it was, it was one of those things where my spirit is still not settled. I didn't go out to party. I just went to detox. And it, it was an amazing event because it was not a lot of people, which really made me feel good because everything was spread out. It was outside and it was literally just, it wasn't a club. It was, you guys found me on that stuff? I was ordered some food and it was, it felt good, you know? Um, to just be a voyeur when I came home. And then my first rep I sponsored in the business, Paul and Nicola, I don't know if, I think Paul and them have met them, but my first reps, their mother became like, if you know our family, we become family. Like, like really become family. Like, like I'm learning everything about Stephanie. I know everything about Evan's family. I know everything about Janika's family. I know everything about everybody that's in my family. <laughs> know everything about Johnson's family, know everything about Heather's family. I know people that are my family, know everything about Al's family, people that are my family. When you become my family, you become my family. First, before the business, right? So that's how the business runs. By the way, that's an amazing footnote you need to take down. If, if you build a family first, the business will run itself. <laughs> so you got to be very careful who you let into your house. <laughs> Some of y'all letting any time Dick and Harry in your house and trying to figure out why all your furniture is gone when you get home. Why you didn't spend so much time on the wrong person and they just, well, they, they seem like the one. So you just gave your keys, your heart, your emotions. You're in an emotional roller coaster because you gave your keys to somebody who you thought was going to be the next SVP, next SVP, the next person that's going to blow your business up. You just gave them, or you just left your baby has only been in the business three months with the keys and said, just take care of yourself. I'll be back in a few days. And you're trying to figure out why your business hasn't taken off, why your house is a mess. You left the dog in the house. It's only six, eight weeks. And trying to figure out why the, everything is torn up and your, you don't have no more shoes. Is that what you're trying to <laughs> you hell out of here. You were that irresponsible to not tend your, your, your pregnancy, your birth, your, your, your dream for two weeks. You took two weeks off and you didn't, you didn't, you didn't even tell them. You said, hey, you know, I, I know you were just born, but could you, could you go up to the store and get you some Simulac on your own? <laughs> Jesus, help me this moment and take the wheel. So the point of the story was, I got a call at 2.30 in the morning and Paul's mother, which I want you guys to pray for, her name is Barbara, um, was like a second mother, is like a second mother to me, and has, she just, she's just a freak, she is, she's the most God-fearing, she, that's why, that's the only way you could be like my mother, is you pray for me, <laughs> you know, I was having this conversation with my team yesterday, it's like, um, well, actually with my boy, when, and I, this gets into the sellout part, the last two are going to be real good, but I'm going to have to almost wait or maybe get on happy hour tonight with Mr. Al Thomas to cover the other two because sellout is so important. When you sell out, listen to what I'm saying. 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 
when you sell out on your dream, and when I say your dream, I'm talking about whatever God planted in your heart. You wouldn't be on this call unless he planted this in your heart. And in order for this to grow, you're going to have to water it. You're going to have to tend it. You're going to have to fertilize it. You're going to have to make sure it gets enough sun. You're going to have to take it out of the sun uh, so that it doesn't get burnt up in the sun. It, it, it could be to be able to get healthy. If, if it's to get healthy, if, if it's for your finances, if it's for, 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 your, for your marriage, if it's for your children, if it's for um, your salvation, you're going to have to sell out. It, whatever it is that you want, you're going to have to sell out. And when, when I sell out, it's like I have no space for random conversation. I'm walking the edge here because I want to use some examples, but it's 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 the daggers are just, they will just go too deep. I may not see people again. You have to walk a line where you're sold out that you you cannot accept phone calls from people. Some people are going to have to either be put in the shelf, put in a public storage place, or cast away into a trash can certain relationships are gonna to have to go away. When the phone rings, you're going to have to push end. When the phone texts, you're gonna to have to not respond. When the, when, when the person is reaching out and they say, in the name of serving you, we need to talk. You need to know that you are not serving me, you're taking from me and stop feeling like you owe somebody an answer, that you owe somebody your time, that you owe somebody a response. If my life is on the line, I don't owe you jack. And if you aren't coming to the table, if I had COVID, which I don't and haven't and God knock on wood, If I had any ailment, any chronic disease, anything, and let me tell you something, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you something, Byron, Byron, come over, get, your, get over here, let me tell you something. Being broke is a chronic disease. Did you not hear my spiritual warfare this past Wednesday when I talked about the talents and how God cursed the man who tried to save his money, cursed the man who thought it was safe to work on a job, cursed the man who thought he could get benefits from someone other than himself being Jesus, cursed the man, but blessed the two that came back that doubled up. As I explained, two fish, five loaves of bread will always provide if you show up. If you show up, that 5,000 people with two fish and you live in Byron. I don't know whose name on here is Byron today, but I'm just having a great conversation with you. You just pick up the pen. I need you to write this down. Stop the scarcity thinking, please. Stop thinking so small. Stop thinking everything got to be perfect before you do something. You are, you are already built in the likeness. Let me tell you something. You were born perfect, perfectly imperfect so that I can improve upon you. But if you want to do it on your own, let's see how that's working. Show me how that's working. See, you, you said you had a goal of making some money. Some. What you missed is the sum part. Oh, you thought it was S-O-M-E? See, the sum <laughs> when it comes to money and understanding energy and understanding inertia and understanding how I build prosperity for you, says the Father, is that I will give you more than you can ever use in a lifetime, more than you ever need in a lifetime. And you sitting up there, sitting up there setting a the goal so small that only feeds you and makes you happy with your little small mind and small gifts and small material things that you want to take care of. You don't understand. The people that are wealthy are the ones that live not for riches, but for wealth, abundance, massive abundance to feed others. That's why I took five loaves of bread and two fish to feed 5,000.
The scarcity thing is gonna kill you, B. Stop playing small. The key in doing this, sir, is understanding the system, getting you a mentor. Find you a mentor that you will not, I have, no, 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 I'm not your mentor. You on my call two, three times a week. A mentor you wake up to, you go to bed to, you talk to every day. The people I mentor, we on the phone two, three, four times a day, every day. That's why they're producing. What do we produce? A strand of barley or me a headache? I'm just trying to understand. You look cute, you know how to do your hair, you know how to get your nails done, you know how to dress up. But there's something about people on your planet that know how to look good, show up in a car, get their nails done every week, get their hair done even in this COVID time, have a nice little wardrobe, pretty as a mug. Somewhere they left the body, they never showed up. They showed up looking pretty. I showed up to work. I showed up to work. That's what I'm doing today. I'm here to work. And what that means is understanding, which I'll talk a little bit about tonight, how to drip on people, how to attack the list but you gotta learn how to plant the seeds. So the other two parts that you have is learning how to drip. We set up, and I'm gonna show you here. Uh, let me see if I have it here. And I'm actually calling Ms. Mrs. Driscoll as well as Mr. Thomas, as well as Julian, and want them to send it to me too, as well as Jeffrey. I know Jeffrey knows it definitely. Um, let me just share with you. So I'm gonna give you this last little piece, this morsel, this dessert. I'm just gonna drip on you a little bit, show you how powerful it is. So here, here. Dripping on people is the most important, powerful thing you could ever do. So what we have in here is we actually have a thread for my Five Star Generals called video and death crawl. So here, let me do it like this so you guys can get an idea. Let me just show you. I wanna really go back here and make sure it goes to the sound. Uh, go here and go here. And so death crawl, I, see, I know many of you know about that, but I sent somebody yesterday to understand the person who first saw greatness in me, Dr. Miles Monroe. And then it's in there what's possible. And then what's in there with Jocko. And then what's in there as far as just when I walked, obviously, as SVP, I think that I don't even remember where that was. But the human psychology and what people are capable of. And then in turn, in all in all series, Pastor John Gray. And then we went into an, a leader's greatest burden. And we go in. And so the point of this, I want to show you, for example, somebody had just came in and they're like, um, when you learn how to drip on people properly, then in turn, it buys you time to see if they're going to do what they need to do without you working your butt off for nothing, for what they didn't do, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you guys are following this conversation. So I want you guys to understand the power of doing this. I have no idea what I just, I want to show you something. Hold on. I was rushing to get you guys so fast. I was just doing everything. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell I did. So that's not that important right now. But the point of this is, is let me stop this here. We have an arsenal of videos. And I was this this chapter that me and my 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 hit squad is in, I come the hit squad, they're my sniper crew, is learning how to attack the list. The reason why we spent the last 45 actually now pushing 60 days and I did not allow them for 45 days to talk to anybody 
is because I wanted to make sure I didn't have to pre-qualify them to be committed. They already, I already knew that, but I had to pre-qualify them in the sense of what I was committed to do in training them to make sure the preparation was done. See, I couldn't just let them have the pregnancy without making sure that everything was right at home to bring the baby home. <laughs> you don't just drop a child and then put it in the, in, in the pig slop. <laughs> I, I need to know the mind is right. So I had to do my part and making sure, okay, I know if you give me those lists, immediately over 70, 80, 100 people coming into business. But then I would become Moses and have to be responsible because you don't know what to do with them because I'm now leaving a two-year-old to now raise an infant. So I said, I need hands for the flock to grow. I can carry 50, 60, but with 10, I can carry 600. I need exponential growth. So when we get those lists and, and you get them on the phone and then I do what Mr. Al Thomas does and I attack the list and I talk to these people and have them call me back and I set hours, then I need to know who I could turn them over to and all my work doesn't just go down the damn toilet because I busted my tail. And then I get frustrated and want to stab you in the neck. And it's not your fault. It's my fault as a leader because I didn't prep you properly. I didn't train you properly. I didn't put you in boot camp mentally. The ones that are going to run fast without me, we're going to run fast without me anyway. But with my boot camp on top of it, it makes them a god. I know in being sold out what my anointing is. You should know your anointing. Mr. Thomas knows his anointing. Mrs. Driscoll knows hers. Julie knows his. The leaders know their anointing. I am one of the greatest teachers ever born on this planet. Maybe not one of the greatest networkers as far as network marketing, but the greatest teacher allows me to get paid better than the best network marketer on the planet. Did anybody catch what I just said? <laughs> See, that's why they call Jesus the teacher and the master. He was the master because he was the master teacher. And he learned by being a carpenter. And he learned by using his hands and his brains and getting dirty. And what does a carpenter do? A carpenter builds. And I said, if I can duplicate in today's 21st century building and become a master builder, then if I could get blessed just a fraction of what Jesus has done. I've served my time here on this planet. But before I can do that, I have to sell out. Not on being in the business, but sell out on going to build my dream through the business. And I have to be so passionate and so excited, and so authentic and filled with integrity and finish my task and set my goals and love on people so much and have so much fun. I can promise you, when you build properly, you will laugh, cry, all the way to the bank. <laughs> you will laugh and cry with what you built as a family, as a team, to so many memories, so many experiences, so many M&Ms. That's my life. Today is called M&M. That means moments and memories. That's all I live for. This is a moment right now. And I promise you, I won't ever forget it. It's a memory. 
if I die tomorrow, you guys have no choice but to celebrate me. Me and Janika and my family were laughing about the other day. Let me tell you, this is the last piece. My obituary, if you cry, you kicked out. And you don't get the $1,000 underneath the chair that you invited to come and get. There will be a DJ. <laughs> there will be lobster, crab legs, king crab legs, steak, soap fig. You vegans, uh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to just, you know, slop it up for that. There will be everything that you can want. There's gonna be wine. Jesus had wine. We're gonna have wine. Uh, today will be little Jack Daniels. We're we, we gonna have a party. <laughs> And because I don't want to hear nobody sitting up there in the name of me, sitting, you ever been to one of the funerals and people sitting up there and by the time they finish talking about the person, they're like, that's not who the hell they were. Who did, who did you know? But they make it all sound, no, you, you ain't got, you, there will be, you won't have to, you won't, nobody will be able to like manipulate or, or, or change the conversation about who I am because I'm actually going into what's the phone. Where is it? The one I was looking for. I, well, I'm actually going into it's my contract. Moses, I'm finishing up a call. Give me five minutes, okay? Okay. All right. So I'm actually going into the studio in the next, before this year's out, because I do not want to be looking down from heaven. I will, I will just roll it. I, you would, nobody's going to sit up there and make me listen to a, 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 more, a, a service, a celebration of life, and it's another morgue. Anybody been to those? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like, we're going to go celebrate life. And you get there and everybody, uh, uh, half the people, one foot out the door. The other people like, when we serving the food, the other person's like, is they going to stop talking? Jesus. That's why I'm going to do my own. I'm like, look, I can see all y'all right now. Don't make me come from the heavens and strike you down. We're going to make this short and brief. Let me tell you about my life. Let's, let me tell you how you're going to celebrate my life since your ass showed up, since I'm dead now. I can say everything unapologetically. Oh, I can see you, Susie, over there. Stop acting like you're crying. You never liked me in the first place. Get your butt up out of my service. Oh, I'm definitely going in. Live a life that will be revered. Live a life that is electrocuting. Live a life that is exciting. Let people see the glory in your heart of who you are. Let them see this opportunity. That's what the opportunity is. That's what ACN is, is blessing people. Get excited and run. What do you say? Walk into the village, give them my message. If you can't find one person to save, turn around. And if you turn back around, I'll turn you into a pillar of salt. He said, I, I'm not sitting up there trying, just, just you're a messenger. Don't tell them not to shoot the messenger when you sit up there acting stupid enough to be shot. I, when I do my business, where are we at? I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up 60 seconds. When I do my business, I'm just the postman. Here's your mail. Here's your mail. Get that dog. Oh, here, I'm going to leave the mail right here. Have, here's your opportunity to never have to work another day in your life. I have it. It was delivered, signed, sealed, and delivered by Jesus. I'm just the messenger. This will save your life, your house, and your marriage, and your income will change. Here, I'm going to set it right out here. It's called residual income. It's a, it's a beautiful little package right here. I'm going to leave it right outside the door because that little nasty dog you got back there, that little negative person you got in your house, that little bad person you shouldn't have married, that other person that you shouldn't be lying next to no more, that other person that you call your friend that's a backstabber and still broke trying to keep you broke, all the negative people, all the people in your phone that you act like your friends and you haven't called them in over 15 years, all the people you got on your fake Facebook called crack book and you say you got people and friends, but you can't call one of them to become a customer so i'm gonna leave this right here so that you know all the instructions right it's the instructions to be able to show you how to build something where you can live amongst people who will serve you love you raise you up and change everything about your life to make you wake up with a glow daily and smile at the heavens and say jesus thank you for getting me up one more day to change your life huh well did you get all that byron yes sir Great, I'll see you in happy hour. Love you guys. <laughs>